Well, I think that it's very important that uh, all the people in the world get more aware of what radioactivity uh, really is. For there seems to be a misapprehension by people that don't have the spe uh, specific knowledge about this area. And for they don't have this specific knowledge, they can react in panic when they hear something is radioactive. And that should change, for there are many forms of radioactivity and people should be aware of that. There are man-made forms, there is natural radioactivity, and these things are totally different. And also the precautions to take are totally different. The levels of radiation are totally different. And that means that you can approach them totally different. One of the most important developments is in the regulation. Uh, the regulation is coming from international organizations like ICRP and IAEA. And they provide uh, recommendations based on a linear non-threshold model. And for me, myself, there is an amount of dose I can get in a year. But the regulation does not tell whether I can get it in one day or just continuously over a year. And the regulations we have uh, right now assume that the effect will be the same if you get it in one day or just in little portions over a year. But now, uh, in the latest uh, years, there's a conviction that, is, that this is not the right model and that we have to change the point of view. And I think that in the coming recommendation, the basic safety standards from the ICRP, that they uh, leave this idea of the linear non-threshold model and going to regard the dangers and the biological effects in a different way. And I think that is one of the biggest developments in the latest year. It's a bigger problem for there are so many costs related to the precautions that are taken and there are so many costs involved if an entire load of about 100,000 kilos have to be re rejected that it should be good when we uh, find means of uh, reusing radioactive contaminated uh, parts or if we have uh, contaminated steel, that we find some applications to use it, for example in a nuclear plant, for this environment will be uh, radioactive and then you could as well use low radiating components. I think that we have to be aware that a lot of installations uh, will be decon um, decommissioned in the coming years and all these installations have huge amounts of activated steel in it. And if we don't have a solution for this activated steel, we'll ha we will have to dispose of it. And when we d dispose of it, it's going to be huge amounts. And I think that's what we should prevent.